Hey y'all, it's Mimsy from MimsyandCompany.com. I'm going to give you a quick tour of my spray booth, which I have created in my carport. Um, it's uh, quite simple. I have just attached plastic drop cloth around the outside of my entire carport. And then I attached it to some of the poles even to keep it from blowing around so much. It um, it works great. And then it puddles on the ground, so it doesn't blow around a whole lot. The blue, the blue tarp right there is where I go in and out. Um, and at night I, I attach that, I fasten it shut. Um, the um, drop cloth is mainly to keep the paint in so the paint is not floating around and landing on cars and plants and everything else like that. But the main reason why I do it, not just to keep the paint contained, but also to keep the dirt and dust and moisture off of my cabinets. Um, and also so I can have a controlled environment in order to assist in the dry time. Um, I'm in Florida, so it's always quite humid here. And um, keeping the moisture off of the cabinets is the most important thing. That's the main reason why I put all this plastic up, because it's so humid here no matter what you do, uh, humidity and dew would settle on the cabinets overnight. And when you're painting cabinets, especially like these that are need quite a few coats, you don't want to have to be moving them around and taking them in and out and stacking them up on top of each other. You definitely don't want to stack them because no matter what, they need a lot of time to cure and you'll end up having cabinets stuck together for sure. So anyway, you have to leave your cabinets. If you're going to paint cabinets, you have to leave them in place until you're completely finished and then let them dry for a couple days um, if possible before handling them and stacking them and moving them. If you're taking them directly inside to hang them, that's better. I'm doing this for a client, so I have to deliver them to her in a few days. So I'll have to move them so they need to be completely dry. Anyway, so I wanted to show you the carport. I just have the drop cloth stapled all the way around. Um, I also keep in here a little portable heater, which I have right here, and I keep this running pretty much all the time, um, just to keep the humidity down in here, um, keep the temperature up in here, because it's December right now, and although it's, I'm in Florida, so it's 75 degrees in December, so it's perfect painting weather, but there's still humidity in there, so I keep that in here just to keep the humidity um, at bay and just help with the cabinet dry time a little bit. So I use uh, saw horses um, and a couple other random items. I've got some little um, TV trays back there. Um, I've got some different random shelving things that are all about the same height as saw horses. Holding up my 1x4s, I purchased these um, one by fours, 14 foot long at Home Depot because they're so cheap. It's the cheapest way to make a table and then I can store them afterwards really easily and for next time. So these one by fours are 14 foot long and they are only $3.63 or 93 cents, one or the other. So they're relatively inexpensive way to make a quick table to hold a lot of stuff. Um, and then I take um, roofing nails um, with the tabs, these roofing, with the caps, I mean, these are roofing nails that have the orange cap, and I nail those in, and I put a little painter's tape on the top to cover that nail in order to raise my cabinets up off of the 1x4 so that when I'm painting them, the edge of the cabinet is not sitting directly on the wood. Otherwise, when you spray it, it would puddle up right there and create, um, bumps and lumpiness. So you want your you want your cabinet elevated up off of whatever you're painting. I have in the past actually hung my cabinet doors from the ceiling. You can see right above my head right there, there's a hook. And there's a bunch of eye hooks all the way across here. In the past I've done a few sets of cabinets hanging them from the ceiling, but I find that you need a lot more space for that. And with this many doors, I just didn't have the space for that. Not to mention when you have them hanging, they have a tendency to want to just continuously spin on you back and forth, which is good because you can spin them around to spray both sides at once. Um, 
but I find it hard to control them and they would knock into each other. I just found that hard to do. If you're doing a small kitchen or just a few items that you know you don't need a lot of space for, that's definitely a good way to do it quick because you can spray the entire thing at the same time. The way you would do that is the, the side of the cabinet that's the if it's a top cabinet, you would put a little put a little eye hook in the top part of the top cabinet. So when the cabinet is up, it's going to be up there. So you won't see that little hole that was created from that eye hook. If it's a lower cabinet, obviously, you would put the eye hook in the bottom of the lower cabinet so you wouldn't see the hole in the lower cabinet because obviously it's going to be way down here. So anyway, that's, that's another option for um, spray painting um, that's pretty easy. But I just found this is this was the best way because I had so many cabinets and all the drawers are actually, the drawer fronts are in my garage. So this is just the doors here. I've got all the drawers in the garage. Anyway, this is what I use. I use one of these handy dandy Cricut sprayers with my compressor. Um, I've used all kinds of different sprayers. This is by far my favorite. I've used the HVLP. I've used the the gravity kind with the thing up here where the paint sits up here and it's gravity that pulls it this, the paint out. Um, this is definitely my favorite. It's the simplest. Um, it cleans really easily. If something jams up, like if the paint's not coming out, it's real easy to figure out how to fix it. Um, I've sprayed oil through here. I've sprayed the shellac primer, which I did on these, through this, and it's very easy to clean. And the nice thing about this is that this is just a regular 16 ounce mason jar. Um, so you can alternate between oil and latex or like with the shellac primer. I used the shellac primer on these first so I had, um, and I was making samples at the same time, so I had a jar of shellac primer, I have a jar of paint, you can have a jar of polyurethane as well, and all you do is just unscrew it clean the nozzle only and put your new jar on there. It's really easy to change between products. So anyway, that's this is the Cricut sprayer. I bought it on Amazon. I think it's like 60 bucks. So there you go. So I think that's about it. Um, that's about all the details with my, my DIY spray booth. This is the way I do it. I'm sure some professionals are out there are cringing, but I think you could probably spray just about anything in a, in a situation like this. I, I've seen even people do cars like this, but um, anyway, um, there you have it. If you have any questions, I did do a blog post on my blog at mimsyandcompany.com. If you want to um, comment on my blog, I'll answer your questions, or if you, um, I think you can comment here on YouTube. Anyway, it's mimsyandcompany.com. Check it out. If you have any questions, message me. Thanks. Bye.